I'm Judy Shaw for NYC Floor Talk. Joining me today is Raji Thomas. He is the founder, chairman, and CEO at Sprinkler. Raji, it's always wonderful to see you. Thanks for joining me on Floor Fantastic Talk. Fantastic to see you too. Thank you. So you are here today. You just held your first investor day at the New York Stock Exchange. So tell me, how was the day? How'd it go? First investor day, it was beautiful. Well, thank you for hosting it. And uh, I, I think we had a, a full room and uh, we walked them through our, our platform, why it's a platform, number one why it's purpose built for the future of the front office. We, and we showed them how, why the front office need to be unified with the power of artificial intelligence and why we think a unified CXM is going to be what is the next evolution for CRM. Um, so it was very exciting. We also did talk about, for the first time, we broke out our product revenues, product suite revenues. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of like people were surprised that our service, the CCAS offering that we have, has a CAGR of 50% uh, over the last three years. Um, that was, and then we also did put a, 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 we drew a line and we said, we're gonna have a float of a billion dollars in subscription revenue uh, by calendar 2026, which is FY27 for us. And, you know, at least $200 million in free cash flow. So. That was a, a lot of things, you know. I think a billion with a rule of 40 and 200 million free cash flow. Sounds like a good company to me. <laughs> Sounds like you had a good investor day today. We had a beautiful day. And now you're going to be ringing the closing bell as well to kind of close out your day. So that's very exciting as well. <laughs> All right, so Raji, it's actually been two years since you went public on the NYC. That was in June of 2021. So tell me, what were some of the, the highlights from your last quarterly results? And what have you been focused on to maintain sustainable growth? Well, what we, uh, when we went public, we articulated the story of reacceleration, and And that's what we've been able to deliver. Every quarter we have hit or beat pretty much everything we've guided to. And you know, it's not been an easy market for anyone and the economy being where it is, um, but we have a few things going for us. Every company that we know of is looking to digitally transform itself, to adapt, to bring down costs. Um, and we are on the right side of history with that. And what we're able to do is reduce the cost we're able to help them increase the revenue because we have a, our marketing and advertising suite helps them do that. Yeah, our yeah. contact center service suite helps them bring the cost down. The inside suite gets some insights on what's working and what's not working in terms of how do we make the products better. So we have a lot of things that are just really kicking in and the power of making it all unified and the power of AI is just really been driving our growth. So. All product suites are growing, as we announced today. Um, CCAS is what's new and exciting for us. The contact center industry, as you know, is an $800 billion industry. Bulk of that cost is in labor. Um, and with AI, I think a big chunk of that is going to be at play. And <coughs> what we've been able to do is take our capabilities that were fine-tuned in digital, and digitize voice, so now we can bring down the cost, increase customer satisfaction, resolve, resolve issues faster. Okay, so you do mention CCAS, um, and you've been expanding into the contact center as a service market um, with strong growth in that. Um, tell me, why are you focused on this area? The contact center market is, is 40 years old, and what's happening is uh, given the pressure on cost and given uh, the consumers moving to new channels, um, it's coming up on a transformation flush. What I mean by that is companies are looking to consolidate data centers, companies are looking to move this to the cloud. So they are looking at this whole technology stack like for natural reasons. And it's a huge industry, so it was just very natural for us having grown up in the engagement space and social customer service and digital customer service, which is natural for us to add voice and get into this. And we see a huge opportunity in the next three years. All right, so you just announced a few new product innovations, including new AI features. So tell me, what makes your AI capabilities different? Yeah, now you should know, as we talked about <laughs> at IPO, um, we're one of the few companies that 
kind of went AI first five years ago. And I, our IPO had about five pages of, five to seven pages of AI in it, prospectors had. Um, and so our AI is different because we're, we're not just connecting to like an open AI and, and, and adding an AI feature. There are hundreds of features, pretty much everything in Sprinkler is built on AI. And what we've been able to do now with generative AI is give it wings. And so we, we're taking every feature that we have and we're seeing the, as we add generative AI, we're seeing the adoption go through the roof. So for example, in the contact center, we had a feature called smart response. If you're an agent, we'll give you, hey, a likely way to solve this. With generative AI, we can give you a full script. So you just can read it as opposed to having to interpret and translate it. We can change the tone to be more helpful. So there's a, there's a lot we can do now. And, and look, we've been, we, have, we are an AI first company and that's been a key differentiator for us. All right, well, Raji, always wonderful to talk with you. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk today. Thank you very much, Judy. <laughs>